This presentation of the Savage Nation is brought to you by Inheritance Funding Company. Borders, language, and culture. If you don't care about them, I tell you why they're important. The Savage Nation, weekdays, 3 to 7 on Talk 910 KNW. Warning. The Michael Savage Show contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Here is Michael Savage. for today included the following. One was the confirmation of Judge Sonia Sotomayor. The other is Al Gore seeking to use global warming as an excuse to grab power for a global government. An update on the release of five Iranian detainees, crazy. And the craven and foolish Republican Party. Another topic was the porn king's son held on murder charge in Marin County, California. Remember the Mitchell brothers who created Beyond the Green Door, Behind the Green Door, with Marilyn Chambers? Well, his 27-year-old son killed the mother of his one-year-old daughter with a baseball bat in a Nevada home. What a family. Some DNA just needs to be, let us say, uh, disappeared from the planet. It's just bad. Is Judge Sotomayor the best choice? Well, many people on the conservative side are saying she's too liberal, which is true. But is she the most liberal of all the possibilities of who Obama and the leftists could have picked? I don't think so. What about this? What if Sonia Mayor happens to be the best choice for the Supreme Court, given the options? Remember who she's replacing. She's replacing Breyer, a liberal. So what would you expect, Obama to pick a conservative? No, he's going to pick a liberal. But how far to the left is she? Well, let's look at the runners-up that were reviewed by the White House before Sotomayor became the nominee. First was Diane Wood, a justice on the Seventh Circuit. She was nominated to the bench, mm, stench for the bench is making me clench, by Bill Clinton in 1995. Let's look at Diane Wood's record. She had once ruled against a group of taxpayers who wanted to use the RICO statute to recover lost taxpayer funds when a corrupt loan was made to a public official in Chicago. However, when the RICO statute was used on anti-abortion protesters, she said that RICO could be used against them. You see what I just said? She said no to RICO to get back tax money given to a grifter. She said yes to RICO to slam anti-abortion protesters. Okay? Then there was another runner-up named Elena Kagan, the current Solicitor General, nominated to that post by Barack Obama in January. When she was the Dean of Harvard Law... She barred military recruiters from using campus services because of the don't ask, don't tell policy. And she didn't reverse that decision for two years until it became clear that the school was risking the loss of federal funds because of the ban. A real radical leftist, Elena Kagan. Who else was on the list of potential Supreme Court nominees that the Obama White House looked into? Well, none other than Janet Napolitano, the current head of Department of Homeland and Security, who I think did not handle the swine flu epidemic properly because of her inability or lack of desire to control illegal immigrants, particularly from Mexico. And she's the one who released the report on right-wing extremism that singled out returning combat veterans and others uh, to be subjected to extra vigilance by law enforcement. Unbelievable. Yes, we all may be unhappy with Sonia Sotomayor. We all may feel she's an extremist. But the alternatives that could have come out of the extraordinary radical Obama White House might have been a whole lot worse. This is Michael Savage. I approve of this monologue. I'll tell you, it's not that important right now. We know it's lib, lib, vote, period, end of story. I'll talk about other things for a minute, if you don't mind, okay? Like, I got a small case of the flu yesterday. I know I'm not supposed to get it. I'm Superman. I'm Mr. Herb. I'm Mr. Vitamin. Well, it came on. I don't know whether it was the flu. Whatever. I've been traveling around, and you touch this, you touch that. You shop, you don't put on the gloves, you rub your eye, you rub your ear, you rub your... Whatever. 
So I felt the whole deal, the, the legs, the this. I said, oh, my God, on a vacation, I don't want this. So then the throat was starting. I'm telling this for a reason. So I went into my protocol because today I'm better. I'm, I'm still, like, not out of the woods, but I know that I beat it back because it was, it was coming up like a vengeance in my throat. I once got a sore throat in the Fiji Islands. There was no telephone in those days. We had to use radio telephones to call from where I was collecting plants. I got so sick, they gave me herbs to stop it, I probably would have died. It was the worst sore throat I ever got in my life. To make a long story short, I felt that monster clawing at my throat again. It was coming up from the depths on the back of my throat. What did I do? First thing I did was go back to vitamin C. I'm talking about four grams. Uh, that's a flat teaspoonful in juice. You know, really heavy do wackaroo. Then I spray my throat with echinacea golden seal. Uh, there's an echinacea golden seal mixture that you spray. I never felt that this stuff's a miracle, okay? Now I'm calling me around Sotomayor. Okay, it's okay. You can. I'm going around Sotomayor. I'm talking about the, the flu. So I'm telling you what I did to stop it. After I got the natural stu substances in my body, I went to the real natural. I went to scotch and red wine. I normally don't drink scotch because I get a headache from it, but I always drink it when I feel a sore throat coming on because I told you an old man who survived World War II inside the belly of a cow who didn't drink. He was a teetotaler, but at age 90, he said to me, whenever he feels a sore throat coming on, he takes scotch and he basically gargles with it. I didn't gargle. Well, I gargled, then I drank it. There's no point in wasting uh, 1991 single malt scotches there. So I took a double twice. The doctor said, take two doubles. I'm the doctor, so I said, take two doubles. I said, okay, are you sure? I said to myself, yes. I asked myself, are you positive, doctor? The doctor said, I'm sure, so I took two doubles. Then I opened up a bottle of uh, Gaia Italian Red, sorry, San Lorenzo, very, very good. I don't drink it. I swear to God, if you had offered it to me the night before, I went to dinner with some relatives here, red wine, I would have thrown up. They had a bottle of uh, uh, a Chianti Classico. Just smelling it, I got sick. I needed it. I knew what I got. I can't explain how these things work. But you don't realize your body chemistry changes according to uh, various things. Then I cooked. I craved onions. I craved garlic, which I happen to know have phenomenal antibacterial, antiviral properties. And, man, did I make a hot sausage and pasta with the baronara and garlic and gaja red. And that's it. And I woke up feeling better. So go figure. It works. In other words, everything works. So that's Michael Savage's anti-flu protocol so far. Tomorrow I could be hospitalized, but I'm not hospitalized today. I'm feeling better. And here I am on the air. Obama stopped CIA from hunting and killing al-Qaeda leaders. Did you read that story? A secret CIA initiative terminated by Director Leon Panetta was an attempt to carry out a 2001 presidential authorization to capture or kill al-Qaeda operatives. I've never seen an administration like this in my life. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Is your inheritance stuck in probate? Inheritance Funding Company can advance you the cash you need in as little as 72 hours. Go to inheritancefunding.com or call 877-U-AIR. That's 877-Y-O-U-H-E-I-R. Fresh and original every day. Live and real. On the air, online, on demand. Armstrong and Getty. Weekday morning, 6 to 10. Talk 910 KNEW. We've had retired Major General Jerry Curry on as a guest a number of times on the Savage Nation to discuss Korea and other military issues. Now he joins us to talk about his new book discussing his life entitled From Private to General, An African-American Soldier Rises Through the Ranks. General Curry, welcome back to the Savage Nation. Uh, Michael, this is an absolute delight. I am, I'm glad to be back with you. Give us the background of your book. My book, uh, my book from uh, Private to General is about hope. And it's about America. It's about this country and what a wonderful nation this is and how a young fellow who was a member of the minority, uh, a black American, back in the days when we really had the strong segregation, it, it tra travels my time of uh, growing up, entering the Army, and uh, pursuing the, uh, the military right up through the ranks, finally from private up to general, 
And uh, it was not all easy, and the book shows there's some very difficult times that came. But this nation makes it possible, uh, no matter how difficult it is, it makes it possible for us to succeed, all of us. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a story, I think, for every American today, whether you're a white, black, green, orange, whatever you may be. Get in there, work, get the job done, do your very, very best. There will be a lot of disappointments, but in the end, uh, this nation will make it possible for you to succeed. But why did you join the Army? I was, uh, uh, I was living in a steel town in the western Pennsylvania, and uh, people in steel towns, I guess even today, but back then, are very, very patriotic. 